The story of Klaus Barbie, known as the Butcher of Lion, is amazing. He was known to the whole world as the murderer of 14,000 people. He was put on the wanted list several times, but no one was looking for him. Nicholas Barbie, more often called simply Klaus, was born on October 25, 1913 in Bad Godesburg. Klaus's parents were very devout people and wanted their son to become a servant of God. He studied theology and later became a Catholic priest. But his father died early, and his mother failed to influence the character and aspirations of the boy, who dropped out of school in 1935 due to his passion for the ideas of National Socialism and joined the SS in the same year, and two years later joined the NSDAP, and a little later joined the secret police of Germany, the Gestapo. Thanks to his cruelty to the enemies of the Third Reich, he quickly advanced in the service. In 1941, he contributed to the arrest of 1,400 Jews in Holland, for which he was awarded the Iron Cross. The rumor of his cruelty and devotion to the Führer ran ahead of him, opening horizons. In 1942, he was appointed head of the Gestapo in Lyon, becoming one of the key figures in the struggle and the systematic destruction of the French resistance fighters by the Nazis. For the worthy performance of Barbie's functions, he passed an accelerated special course, organizing and conducting a war to suppress rebel brigades, while discovering the inherent nature of the ability to quickly search, detect, and destroy enemies. As head of the Gestapo in Lyon, he was responsible for the deportation of thousands of Jews straight to Auschwitz or to the French concentration camp Drancy, from where they were transported to Poland. After the end of the war, American justice accused him of sending 7,000 people to death camps. But that's not what made Barbie famous. He got his nickname, The Butcher, for his barbaric attitude towards those arrested who fell into his clutches on suspicion of participating in the resistance. Klaus Barbie, whose office was located in the building of the Lyon School of Military Medicine, turned it into a real museum of horrors wrote Spanish politician Jesus Hernandez in his book, Challenging Hitler. The torture chambers were equipped with baths filled with ice water, tables with seat belts, gas burners, and devices that cause electric shock to a person. Dogs specially trained to bite certain places were used to subdue the most recalcitrant prisoners. Barbie had a special pleasure in tearing off the nails of the arrested or driving red-hot needles under them. It was from such torture that the leader of the French resistance, Jean Moulin, died in the Museum of Horrors. Barbie injected acid into the lungs of the unfortunate, watching their reaction, testified the English writer, historian, and academician Guy Walters in his book, The Hunt for Evil. The Lion Butcher was also noted in the fight against children. On April 6, 1944, he and a group of soldiers arrived at an orphanage in the town of Izier. The fascists loaded the orphans captured here, 44 children of Jewish origin, into the car, throwing them into the back like bags of potatoes. Those who tried to escape were beaten with rifle butts. Everyone was sent to the Dronsi concentration camp, writes American journalist Andrew Nagorski in his book Nazi Hunters. The Lion Butcher sent a telegram to Berlin informing about the liquidation of the orphanage as a great victory over an adult armed military unit of the enemy. After the end of the Second World War, the Lion Butcher managed to escape from the justice of the Allies. A place in the dock was allocated for him three times. Each time he received the death penalty, but the sentence was read into the void. The Barbie class was tried in absentia, in case they caught him, but it was difficult to catch him, because almost no one caught him. Klaus Barbie was recruited by the American Intelligence Service, CIC, and for the French judicial authorities, he turned into an invisible man. At the end of the war, numerous offices of the United States began collecting information about Nazi criminals who could be recruited for the future Cold War against world communism which has built a nest in the Soviet Union. Klaus Barbie Bide was described by one of the leaders of American counterintelligence, Robert Taylor, as a purposeful, honest, conscientious, intelligent man 
an idealist who does not hide his anti-communist orientation, boundlessly devoted to national socialism, and believes that the ideas of this trend were betrayed by those who ruled Germany. It's hard to even imagine how these qualities can fit into one person, but Robert Taylor managed to discern them in the Leon Butcher. An honest man, with pronounced sadistic tendencies, could not be better suited to resist the communist contagion. So Klaus Barbie became a CIA officer. It cannot be said that the Lyon Butcher was not searched at all. The French government, through its intelligence agencies, even obtained the facts that the bloody executioner is alive and is somewhere in America, after which it tried to put pressure on the State Department to help with the search for a dangerous war criminal. By the time of receiving requests, Klaus Barbie had already worked for CIC for several years and even managed to retire from active affairs in 1951, having lost his sources of information. Later, Klaus Barbie was given documents in the name of Klaus Altman and allowed to fly to South America. He began to live in Bolivia and lived in it for three decades without suffering from remorse and without experiencing the close attention of the police but actively helping the dictatorial regime that was rampant in this country. In 1980, he served as a security advisor to the neo-fascist President Luis Garcia Mesa. However, justice has prevailed. Altman Barbie was found by a French married couple of journalists and Nazi hunters, Beate and Serge Klarsfeld, who managed to get him arrested and extradited, despite the opposition of the government. It took 10 years to get from the discovery of a Nazi criminal to the dock. In 1987, Klaus Barbie heard his fourth sentence. The court's decision was less strict than the previous three. Tolerance, sometimes turning into forgiveness, was already confidently marching across Europe. The Lion Butcher received a life sentence. As it turned out, the equivalent of only four years behind bars, in 1991, a man who sent at least 14,000 souls to the next world died of natural causes from old age. Thank you for watching this video to the end. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel and like it. See you soon.